just as we launched in the last weekend, Donald Trump decided to send one of, I think, the most dangerous bleats he's ever sent. And that makes him our Monday menace. <laughs> Now, I know what you're thinking. No, he's sent a lot of crazy stuff. How could this possibly stand out? Well, I think that this one does, but I'm gonna read it to you and you let me know what you think. This was sent uh, late Friday. Is McConnell approving of all of these trillions of dollars worth of Democrat sponsored Capital B bills without even the slightest bit of negotiation because he hates Donald J. Trump and he knows I am strongly opposed to them or is he doing it because he believes in the fake and highly destructive Green New Deal and is willing to take the capital C country down with him. In any event, either reason is unacceptable. He has a death wish, must immediately seek help and advise from his China loving wife. Coco Chow. Uh. Uh, there's so much. Okay, so the advice, I guess we're just gonna give him a pass on not knowing yeah. what advice or advice is. is. I think that's the real scandal here is that yeah. it's advice, <laughs> CE. Yes. I, look, the fact that someone whose skull is is just full of rice pudding, the fact that they can get that close to the actual word, I think is impressive. But um there's a lot. It, I mean, there's a, little, a few over. slip ups when you're like, look, when the aliens brought you here, they didn't fully teach you the difference between the noun and, uh, and the, the verb, yeah. and the verb of you know advice. Exactly, and and the idea that that Mitch McConnell believes in the Green New Deal. I mean, look, all of that is crazy, but that's normal crazy for Trump. That's kofefe crazy for Trump. So I don't know, where do you want to start, Francesca? You want to start with the death wish or you want to start with whatever the hell Coco Chow is? Yeah, I don't know what Coco Chow is. I've been looking this up. I'm half Chinese, so I'm like trying to figure out how I'm how and why I'm supposed to be offended by this. Um, so obviously he's talking about Elaine Chow, who was his secretary of transportation, um, who only resigned after January 6th. I mean, she was kind of on board yeah. this entire time. Um, and also like a little bit. Minimal nepotism between the Speaker of the House and his wife, and getting this slot in the administration. Um, don't know what don't, I don't know. I think it's Coco Chow is definitely a burlesque name of like season seven or eight. Someone can correct me <laughs> of Drag Race, but someone who like owns like Chow Chow dogs. I don't know. Yeah, I if Coco Chow was a food, sounds good. But in this case, talking about a person, and I don't look. I, I I did a little bit of googling too. I don't know exactly which way you should be offended, <laughs> but I think most of us should be. If it's definitely weirdly Trumply racist. I mean, never mind that he's calling her the China loving wife when she's Taiwanese. That that's a weird little thing too. But the Coco like. I, I don't know sometimes whether do I just not follow the right weirdos on TikTok or 4chan? Is there a thing that I'm missing? But Coco Chow, it's a big, it's a huge challenge right now on TikTok. Know, exactly. <laughs> like, have you Coco Chow? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think this is a reference to anything. I think his brain is depleted uranium at this point. I think he's, it's just a rotted, festering fungal mass is what it is, and it spits out. Nonsense that even he doesn't understand, but that we know is offensive. She was in his cabinet and he refers to her as China loving wife Coco Chow. I just want to say, I think I think this actually makes perfect sense. I don't think his brain is like, I mean, it's always been leaking, but I don't think it's it's leaking any more than it used to be. Um, we know that he in private is racist as hell. I mean, in public, he's racist as hell, right? The China virus, everything. Like, so. Uh, yes, behind her back, he would totally refer to Lane Chow as Coco Chow. That that makes complete sense to me for him to talk to advisors about like some another loyalist that way, whatever. Because uh, yeah, she's Asian, she's Taiwanese. But then 
you realize that this is about something deeper, which is the rift between Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump, right? And Trump um, afraid that McConnell is gonna swing DeSantis in 2024. And you see there's hits flying back and forth. There's little jabs, uh, it happens on Fox News, it happens on Newsmax, it happens at rallies. But these little jabs, I mean, Trump is trying to get his base angry at Mitch McConnell. And basically, I think also setting up for if his candidates lose in the Senate or the House, he's gonna blame McConnell oh, rather course, than himself. Yeah. I think you're you're totally right. Um, he is like I don't know how many of you go to Truth Social. I, I don't have a Truth Social, but I go to his occasionally just to see you know if he's called anyone Coco Chow recently. Um, he shares every horrible, grainy, low resolution meme that's supportive of him. Every Every video mashup someone does, every article that can be spun as other people shouldn't run against him. It is 20, 30, 40, 50 things a day he shares. And I know that he considers his strength, but imagine in 2010, if Barack Obama's Twitter account was just constantly, nobody else should run against me, nobody, I'm, I'm super strong, don't run against me. It's just, it's so much weakness. but. Aside from the weakness, we do have to turn to the maybe the worst part of this. I mean, the Coco Chow's bad. He said of Mitch McConnell, he has a in all caps death wish. And that is we're supposed to pretend, we're supposed to pretend that we have brain worms and that all that is supposed to be is. Uh, well, he's supporting these bills that he's totally not supporting. And uh, that's bad for Republicans in the election. And, and McConnell would be in charge if they were to win. But now they won't win because of the bills. So politically for his majority, it's bad, i.e. a death wish. That's all it means. It's not a specific all caps threat of lethal violence. We know that none of his supporters would ever attack, never kill, attempt to murder one of the people that he had targeted with his vitriol online, <clears throat> Mike Pence. Nobody thinks that would possibly happen, Francesca. Again, he's, I mean, it's once he touched the third rail, you know, he's like, uh, <laughs> It's like when a monster, when you're like, ooh, actually, that electricity feels good. Like, like I'm gonna keep doing it. Like, well, this is supposed to have the opposite effect. You're supposed to not do the thing that you did on January. You're supposed to not do that. And they're like, no, it's absolutely what he wants. And he's gonna keep on touching the third rail of wishing death and bringing it to that level. Yeah. Yeah. If someone, like, so I have no doubt that Mitch McConnell got death wishes, death threats after this, death wishes, death threats after this. If if you woke up this morning, dear viewer, and you read the news, Mitch McConnell was gunned down while uh, entering his house. So nothing would happen. We're just supposed to pretend that that was not the obvious intended consequence of Trump's call for stochastic terrorism. Specifically targeting a person saying deranged racist things about him and his family. Saying they have a death wish and then just, just lean back. Oh, I have nothing to do with this, it's not about me. And if somebody were to attack him, if somebody were to kill him, Trump would be fine. That would be nothing, there'd be no problem there. And the fact that it hasn't happened is a minor miracle. But I mean anyway. like, okay, look, I don't wish any ill upon anyone, but. Let them fight. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, I, no, I don't. Well, I'm not interested in anything that raises the odds of more political violence. We already have so many threats as we're going to. But if it's them, so if much. it's that, it's against. Even if it's them, if they, even okay. if it's them. Well, I, <laughs> Francesca's in full on bloodlust mode. Just let me, let me wish them to fight each other and kill no. each other off. That's hey, not I'm me not saying perfectly they pure. When 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 Trump kicks the bucket, my Twitter is gonna be lit. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so I'm not like a great person or anything. But let's but just. If, but if one of Mitch McConnell's stooges pulls the trigger, suddenly he's um, suddenly we have to mourn Trump. I don't think so, buddy. 
Okay. Okay. Well, we, I don't we might disagree so. a little bit there. Maybe it's we can not do a all natural one, causes. Stretch. I'm not pulling. You think I'm pulling for the Supreme Court to die of natural? Co- I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> I'm God. kidding. I'm kidding. I you you know I need to Listen, keep doing this show after today. NSA, <laughs> I am pregnant, and this is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, look, we're just we're just gonna leave it now. Okay, that's it. <laughs> we identified his insanely explicitly racist comment and the death threat. And by the way, in the aftermath, we're gonna have a Republican like desperately ducking and dodging having to answer for all this. But we're just gonna move on and we're gonna pretend like that wasn't a call for him to have one of his deranged followers murder the leader of the Republicans in the Senate. That's what it is, but we're gonna pretend that it's not, I guess. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.